Francisco Escobar, and who will present live. So Francisco is a research and in instructor at the School of Electrical Engineering of the University of Costa Rica. His research focuses on power system modeling and coordination of DERS, uh, distributed energy resources to support transmission networks. Uh, Francisco, the floor is yours. Thank you, Florian. Can you hear me well? Yes, very well. Great. So, hi everyone and thank you for attending. I want to present a combined high, medium and low voltage test system for stability studies with DERs. This is a collaboration between the University of Costa Rica and the Cyprus University of Technology. The presentation is structured as follows. I'll begin with the motivation for the development of this test system. Then, since our approach is based on connecting existing network models, I will describe them and explain our methodology to connect them. After that, I'll present our simulation results, which include a power flow scenario and dynamic simulations, and I will conclude with the highlights of our research. So the motivation for developing this test system is that we are interested in studying how DERs and flexible loads can support transmission networks to enhance both the, their voltage and frequency stability. In fact, right now in our research group, we're working on a coordination scheme that takes measurements from the high voltage network and broadcasts a signal to which thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of DERs and flexible loads would respond to. Usually transmission and distribution networks are modeled independently using aggregate models. However, for the study I mentioned, this might not always be adequate since they may lead to artificial synchronization and they ignore individual constraints. This synchronization might be to the fact that uh, with an aggregate model, the signal would arrive at the same instant and the response of the aggregate model might also take place at just one instant. And these constraints might be, for example, for a PV unit, its terminal voltage and its position in the Waldorf curve. And say for an air conditioning unit, it might be the temperature and how close it is to user-defined limits. For that, for that reason, we strongly believe that low voltage network modeling is needed to validate TSO-DSO coordination schemes that involve small scale DERs. In this paper, we present a simulation platform that meets these requirements. On the one hand, the bulk power system is modeled at the high, medium and low voltage levels. And on the other hand, DERs and loads are modeled dynamically and individually. This would enable testing TSO-DSO coordination schemes. This is not a contribution of our paper, but the platform is ready for this application. In fact, we are already using this platform extensively. So as I mentioned, the bulk power system is built using existing network models. So I will proceed to describe them. To illustrate for the high voltage, we employ the Nordic test system, which, which is limited by voltage stability and was recently recommended by a task force of the IEEE. For the medium voltage, we employ a system known as UKGDS, which is representative of the distribution networks in the United Kingdom. And finally, for the low voltage, we employ several networks like the one shown in this diagram, which were derived from a test system recommended by Sigre. For the connection of the high and medium voltage networks, we leverage a toolbox developed recently at ETH Zurich known as TDNetgen. And for that reason, in this paper, we concentrate on connecting low voltage networks to each of the medium voltage loads, and also on ensuring a realistic DR load allocation. And for that, we developed the following four step methodology. In the first step, we diversify the existing low voltage networks. We do so by removing randomly some load buses as well as the lines terminating on them, shown in this diagram with the discontinuous lines. This is important because having too few of these networks would lead to repetition and would therefore introduce synchronization. 
After that, in the second step, we allocate the Rs and loads. Our approach is simple. We simply define a penetration level and allocate, say, PV units in 20% of the load buses. Allocating here means that we know which reactive and active powers would be representative for a PV unit and we assign it to each of these buses. To name more examples, we could allocate air conditioning units similarly and we could allocate non-flexible loads in a much larger percentage of load buses. In the end, we would add up uh, the corresponding powers and if we zoom in on a given load bus, we would see a realistic load consumption. After this allocation, we can therefore estimate what will be the consumption, the total consumption of each network and use that estimate to select which of the available networks will be used to disaggregate a load. And we do that in the third step. For each low voltage network, we assign a voltage of one PU to the primary side of the step down transformer. Then we run a power flow using the primary as a slack bus and the load buses as PQ buses. And finally, we determine the power consumed by that network. It is true that these networks will not operate in general at a voltage of one PU when they are connected to the rest of the system. But this assumption is useful to know which networks to choose in the first place. When we have these estimates, we now solve the following optimization problem. Find a subset M such that its total consumption S sub M, which is the sum of those estimates, is as close as possible to the load S being disaggregated without exceeding neither its real nor its imaginary part. Here I want to comment briefly on the implementation. With an exhaustive method, this would require an exponential time that depends on the size of this set of available networks. This problem can be solved using dynamic programming in pseudo-linear time. It's important to note that this consumption S sub M is not exactly equal to S. To ensure that equality and therefore an exact disaggregation, we need to increase the consumption of each network. And we do that in the fourth step. In the paper, we show that if all networks increase their active power consumption by this fraction and its reactive power consumption by this fraction, then the disaggregation would be exact. This increase in turn would require adding some new loads at each load bus, delta PI and delta QI. However, for the new allocation to be as similar as possible to the original one, we require that these loads uh, be small. To do that, we formulate the problem as follows. It is needed to add powers delta PI and delta QI that minimize some metric of the difference of those allocations. To illustrate, we employ the sum of the squares. And also this optimization problem must be subject to the new network consumption being equal to the one I showed in the previous slide, while the primary operates at the real voltage of the medium voltage network. Also that all voltages lie between some bounds to ensure either a diverse or a flat voltage profile. And finally, that all of those small loads are positive. In other words, this modification of the networks can be thought of as, a, as an optimal power flow problem. But instead of minimizing generation costs or losses, we minimize deviation from the allocation, which we designed in order to be realistic. We then apply this four-step methodology to a transmission distribution system, and in this way come to our results. We disaggregated eight medium voltage loads fed by transmission bus 4047, and we allocated inverter based on air conditioning and conventional air conditioning units, PV systems, and non flexible loads with the penetration levels shown in the center column. And that amounted to the powers shown in the right. It's important to note that this system, only by disaggregated, disaggregating eight medium voltage loads, we had more than 2,300 low voltage buses. These are the voltages that we obtained in the low voltage networks. 
In order to ensure a diverse voltage profile, we set the lower bound of the optimization problem to 0 0.925 PU. We then use this as the initial condition for a dynamic simulation in order to exemplify an application of our platform. These dynamic simulations were carried out in Ramses, which is a time domain dynamic simulator. And in this program, all DERs and loads were modeled as an initial value problem of differential and algebraic equations. So to illustrate, we show on the left the active power consumption of air conditioning units, and on the right, the corresponding room temperatures. Since each of these models includes a two-mass model of the thermal subsystem, we obtain independent temperature trajectories. And therefore, this platform could be used to test control, load control strategies that rely on these individual temperatures. Then, in order to test the response of the PV units, we simulated a five-cycle short circuit near transmission bus 4044, cleared by opening line 4043 and 4044. On the left, we show the transmission voltages and see that this was not a disturbance that led to instability. And on the left, on the right, sorry, and most importantly, we see the terminal voltages of the PV units. Since we are modeling the low voltage networks, we can capture the spreading of those terminal voltages, both before and after the disturbance. To understand the response of the PV units, we need to know the parameters of the low and high voltage ride through curves. When the voltage exits the region of continuous operation, the units are allowed to cease to energize for 0 0.3 seconds, and then they are required to inject power up to four seconds after the disturbance. However, if the voltage drops below this lower line, which is a low voltage right through curve, then the unit should trip. With the exception of this limit, which was raised from 0 0.3 to 0 0.35, just to obtain more diverse responses, all parameters are based on the 1547 IEEE standard. So know, knowing this, let us return to the terminal voltages when we zoom in and superimpose the low voltage right through curve, we can see that some units stay above it, but others go below and therefore should trip. And how can we determine what fraction will do that? Again, we need to model all voltage levels. So from this picture, it is to be expected that some units trip while others do not. And that is in fact represented in, this, in the power generation of the PV units. Immediately after the disturbance, their power generation reduces due to the drop in terminal voltage. Then it drops to zero as the units cease to energize, and then only some units return to generate power while others remain tripped. Similarly, for the reactive power, in here the units were modeled with the Volvar curve such that the initial reactive power production was zero at the initial voltage. We then see that during the disturbance, they generate power, all of them, but after the disturbance has been cleared, most of them remain tripped. So here it is important to note that this independent response, which depends on the nominal characteristics and under terminal conditions, can only be described accurately when modeling the low voltage networks. To conclude, in this paper, we presented a high, medium, and low voltage test system for stability studies that was synthesized from limited data. DERs and flexible loads were modeled individually. The response of DERs was seen to depend on their location, and the system is ready to be used as a testbed of new coordination schemes. I should emphasize that we do not expect power utilities to reach this level of detail but it could be used in academia either to test coordination schemes or to validate aggregate models. And finally, the implementation is available in this GitHub repository in case you all want to take a look. So with this, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And I will do my best to answer your questions 
However, feel free to send any other question to the addresses shown at the bottom. Thank you, Francisco. A very nice presentation. So basically you put at the disposal of the community these test beds, right? Yes. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I would have maybe a question to the end, but I see that here it's uh, starting getting uh, intense in terms of uh, questions. So let's take them in chronological order. I would start with uh, Jordan Holviger. Do you have a building model to get the to, to measure the room temperature? How did you choose it? Yes, we used a two mass model, which accounts both for the air temperature and for the solid masses temperature. And we obtained it, or we, um, yes, we used one that is proposed by Gridlab, which is a software for carrying out simulations uh, related to the smart grid. And we used parameters that were recommended there. We also were careful to initialize uh, temperatures so that they were all spread out in their corresponding dead bands. And we would therefore not have any artificial synchronization. Yep. Okay, good, thanks. I see then two comments that uh, actually overlap. So I see Thierry Zufere and Jordan. So they basically ask about computational complexity and also the time of modeling hundreds of thousands of dares in a low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage grid. Um, what are the main aspects which contributes to, to the computational complexity? Yes, so as I mentioned, there are two um, steps that need to be carried out for each load disaggregation. The first one is the selection of the networks and for that, we have to solve the, minim the optimization problem over discrete sets. That, uh, how much time that takes, depends on how many networks we have and also on how precise we want the disaggregation to be. Um, maybe I can return quickly to that slide. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we use a dynamic programming approach which makes the running time not proportional to two to the n, n being the size of this set, but being uh, proportional to its size, being pseudo linear. And for that reason, this step is not computationally intensive. Uh, for, uh, yeah, for most of the networks we have been disaggregating, it runs in perhaps a couple of seconds. And the optimization problem how much time it takes will depend on um, the constraints. For instance, is if these two bounds are too tight, it will be required to make adjustment to the top uh, ratio. Uh, and also on how close we want the new consumption to be to the original one. But just to give some perspective for this system we disaggregated, uh, that was eight medium voltage loads, uh, about three megawatts. Um, that run under a minute. So yeah, anyway, you are not constrained by computational time because you it's a prospective study, right? It's a planning yes. stage. And so there, there and is it's no also, operation. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the generation of this system should be generated, uh, should be carried out only once uh, for yes. each test case. Right. So that's not a problem. Yes, J just one brief question from my side to make sure that I understood properly. Do you simulate the whole system from including high voltage, medium voltage, and low voltage at once? Yes, uh, that's, we simulate that using RAMSYS mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. okay. all, yes, all the voltage levels are simulated at once as well as the thermal mm -hmm. subsystems, okay. the characteristics. Never of the I encountered any, any numerical issue with this, you know, different per unit system with too small and too big, uh, parameters of lines and so on? Um, no, uh, we have not. And we have used this tool that I mentioned extensively. Ah, okay, perfect, yeah. perfect, great. So thanks a lot for your presentation. I hope that this would be found useful by researchers and they, they could use uh, this in designing uh, coordination schemes between uh, TSO and DSO. So thanks uh, again, Francisco.